Those are the top stories in this news edition. Hello, welcome to ETV News with the news I'm Shemal Islam. The revision of Ethiopian foreign policy focuses on national interests as well as economic, diplomatic and regional integration. Ambassadors and diplomats have discussed the draft revised foreign policy of Ethiopia. Sintaro Tamra tells us more. Ethiopia is revising its 18-year-old foreign policy document. The new draft policy document tabled for discussion with ambassadors and diplomats is said to entail elements that enable the country's diplomatic efforts to see the dynamism of current global and regional trends. The revised version of the policy takes strong points from the old policy document. It does not devaluate its entire content, yet it omits areas that do not match the current trends. Besides, it includes all the country's long-standing national values. For instance, it strongly entertains Ethiopia's stance in the global diplomatic arena. It also accommodates the country's contribution to the African independence, the continent's unity and peace, the global peacekeeping efforts like those in North Korea, Congo, Rwanda, Somalia, South Sudan and others. The policy revision also considers regional integration, economic diplomacy, Ethiopians in the diaspora and global climate change issues. There are new current affairs, new scrambles for power. The old policy was developed when the world was led by a single power. But today, there are emerging powers from different directions of the globe. So the policy should show dynamism to these shifts of power globally. The revision also considers new challenges like climate change issues. The ambassadors and heads of mission that took part in the discussion indicated that the revision also maintains national interest and sovereignty. Relevant stakeholders will discuss the policy document before its approval. It was learned. State Minister of the Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Redwan Hussein, yesterday exchanged a phone call with Hiko Niske, charged affairs of the Embassy of Germany, about the recent incident there, where protesters occupied the Ethiopian Embassy in Berlin and took down the flag. The State Minister expressed his disappointment over the lack of measures against such degrading acts despite prior heads-up. Redwan said the government of Ethiopia recognizes that its citizens have the right to protest. However, he said it would be proper if it's done further away from the embassy's premises in such a way that it wouldn't obstruct daily business. Mr. Heiko Nicek said, the recent development surrounding the security of the Ethiopian embassy in Berlin is unacceptable. He added his government would further look into the matter and rectify the impediment according to the Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In another development, Ethiopian Ministry of Water, Irrigation and Energy, in cooperation with the German Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy, launched an Energy Partnership Innovation Competition themed Decentralized Energy Solutions for Ethiopia. The launch of the competition was held via virtual technology involving senior officials from Ethiopia and Germany, operators of the private sector and innovators, according to the Ministry of Water, Irrigation and Energy. The competition, which invites Ethiopian students and researchers, seeks to assist the efforts the government has been exerting to expand access to electricity and address power demand in rural areas. The competition stipulates competing innovative works to be carbon-free and affordable at the market. The Ethio-German Energy Cooperation and Innovation Competition started in 2019 after the signing of an agreement between the two countries. Finding a win-win solution to the dispute surrounding the GERD is said to be the task at hand as far as the ongoing AU-sponsored talks are concerned. But this is markedly different from approaches followed by both Egypt and Ethiopia, says an international law expert in an exclusive interview with ETV. Ethiopia and Egypt stood at opposite ends, both taking mutual exclusive doctrines on sovereignty. Jerusalem is a hot exit from here. 
Ethiopia started filling the reservoir behind a giant new dam upstream on the Balloon Island in July. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, is expected to help students control future floods. The reservoir behind the GERD is expected to be gradually filled over the next few years as the dam begins to operate, though Ethiopia has yet to agree on its operating terms with downstream countries, Sudan and Egypt. But the row over the $4.6 billion dam has continued as Egypt is bringing the issue of historical rights, while this has been continually turned down by the Ethiopian side. The Tunisians stood on polar opposites in the early years of the negotiation. The contentious issue at the time was their views on sovereignty. Of the other reason is this issue of uh, mutually exclusive doctrines, um, which arise from sovereignty. Ethiopia tends to use the absolute uh, territorial sovereignty approach. Whatever happens in Ethiopia is Ethiopia's property. That was the old approach. Initially, the negotiations uh, from the Ethiopian side were based on this. The Egyptians used the absolute territorial integrity. So that means do not... Secu securitization of... Yes, securitization. Don't touch the Nile because you will uh, affect Egyptian access to it. Ethiopia says... No, we use a, the polar opposite of this view. Nile is Ethiopia's uh, water. We, we use it the way we like. These were two polar opposites in terms of doctrines, in terms of conceptions. These polar views have since recently given way to a middle ground, which helps find a win-win solution. But now we, ha we have to come to a middle ground where... Uh, both countries, I mean, all these three countries come out of it um, in a win-win scenario in, um, and reach a win-win situation, conclusion. Um, so reaching that situation is where the nuances are at the moment. Will I give this much? And then how much am I, stand, uh, am I going to lose? So that's the kind of... Uh, the water expert further warned that the negotiation over the guild is the bare minimum legal battle at Ethiopia face over the night. If and when the countries start talking about conceptive utilization, then the disputes and wrangling over the Nile will get even more complicated, he warned. Let's, let's not be mistaken. This is the smallest level of negotiation. People consider it as, many people consider it as, the, as the, um, the final battle. No, this is the tip of the iceberg. This is where we start. We are not talking about consumptive utilization of the waters of the Nile. We are using non-consumptive utilization. Assume we start to reduce the volumes of the water, then we will have another level of, um, you know, legal and political wranglings and another battle ensues. So we are talking about little issues at the moment. The three Nile riparian states have been at odds with each other for over a decade over Ethiopia's construction of the $4.6 billion Grand Renaissance Dam, GERD, a massive hydroelectric power dam on the Nile River. The Trump administration was called in as a mediator last year. The talks went now here with the U.S. role coming in for security after Ethiopia accused U.S. mediators of siding with Egypt and attempting to coerce it into an unfair compromise. Now in a June, July, August, it rains. It gets cloudy and foggy and muddy and rivers. And you see the whole green thing up in the countryside and it's so beautiful. When New Year's comes, the daisy flowers, they start coming up, you know, everywhere you see is like on the green field, you see the daisy flowers. And like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The new year for me is, it's new. You come up with new ideas. I think the season itself is creating your mind to think new, to think, you know, you know, like things are blooming, you know, the trees are coming out, everything gets green, and the flowers, you know, come up with their different colors. It smells, and the, the air and the, the wetness of that weather, you know, really when you breathe, you know, you feel all this feelings and then this brings a new energy to the new year. Happy New Year to every 
Ethiopian. Welcome back. Now a look at our daily coronavirus updates. Ethiopia reported yesterday 1,105 new cases and 18 deaths from the coronavirus. The total number of confirmed cases now stands at 54,409, while the death toll rose to 846. According to the daily report of the Ministry of Health, the new cases were identified out of the 21,360 laboratory tests, tests conducted in the 24 hours. Some 416 patients have recovered from the virus, taking the total number of recoveries to 19,903.